Cowabunga dudes, the Bro Trio is here to talk about Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. First of all, if you can't guess, the Bro Trio is a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. We grew up oh, on yeah. them. Favorite superhero team right it's, there. They are the best. They have like the best teamwork. Aaron like thoroughly watched the show. And we all thoroughly watch yeah. <laughs> the movies. Like, the live-action movies from the 90s are what we grew up on. Oh, uh, we religiously watched the yeah, show we, when we were kids. We These wore are... out that tape so bad that we had to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> and we also religiously played Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade, on our NES. That was our game growing up. That was... We played it all the time, and we loved it. Like, that was the one game we played that we beat without Game Genie while we were still kids before revisiting it as like growing up or teenagers at least like that was a big one for us mm -hmm. and we yeah. didn't have Turtles in Time until much much later Turtles yeah. in Time Turtles was another time. one once we got our hands on it like that's all we played like we went to our cousin's house a lot more often when he had it because <laughs> there was Turtles <laughs> in Time so we went over to play it but Shredder's Revenge is by far and away the biggest love letter possible to the arcade style beat em up of Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. And it takes everything about those games and takes it to the next level. So, during this powwow, we're going to talk about three main topics that we think are the biggest takeaways from Shredder's Revenge. We're going to talk about the gameplay, we're going to talk about the graphics, and we're going to talk about the soundtrack. All three, great. Oh, yeah, amazing. So, let's get started. Scotty, why don't you tell us about the gameplay. So the gameplay was, as you would expect from a classic beat-em-up, pretty simplistic, but also it was it was incredible. They had all the moves that I can think of, at least, from um, the, the, the Turtles in Time. At and, least uh, the one you have to throw them at the screen. Yeah. That, oh my god, that boss fight. Chrome Dome is one I oh, just man, now thought yeah. of as one of the best from that game. Possibly going to be on our top 10 bosses we'll see how that shakes out but having to battle toads chrome domes ass yeah by throwing cool. foot soldiers into him when he goes first person mode that was amazing and we played with five people we had six initially but one guy had to drop out so we played with five people six people was chaotic five people was just as chaotic yeah. <laughs> but it was a blast it and we, All we, the kept, we kept changing controllers to try out different characters, yeah. too, so that made it even more chaotic, because you were just like, oh, I forgot, I'm not Raph anymore. Yeah, and that's the but. thing, too, like, it <laughs> warrants that. Like, that is the best way to play, I would say, is swap out characters yeah. at every level, because... Everyone plays differently. Yeah, they all yeah. play the same in a basic way, but they have di they have the same combos. It's like Smash Brothers. They all have the same combos, but Bowser doesn't play the same as Pit. Right. So it's like, you yeah. know, Mikey and Raph, they're fast and up close in your face. Now, Raph's a little tough, uh, a little stronger than Mikey, but Mikey's a little weaker, but yeah. faster. And Donatello, the longest reach, uh, slowest he's attack? Slowest. He's slow as yeah. hell. He's yeah. okay at attack. Leo's Mario. He's just the balanced, consistent choice, but he's f***ing awesome. Just like Mario and Smash, I love him. He's a good, consistent one to go with. Splinter? Very strong, Very but immensely slow. Yeah, and we I all liked I liked Splinter a lot though. He's really easy to like pull off combos with for some reason. He seems yeah. like he's got more hits, but it's probably just felt like that because I was Splinter. And Casey Jones, we didn't play with him too much because you have to beat the story to unlock him. But <laughs> uh, going by his stats, he seems pretty overpowered because yeah. he's got like he's at least two stars in everything. Yeah. But three stars in attack, I believe. April. Yeah, I think so. April is the fastest, but the weakest, I believe. Yeah. Um, she was really cool. They were all really cool. Um, but I have a strong Donatello bias, so he ended up being my favorite. And uh, I like that fighting style anyway. A little slower, keep him at a distance. It was fun. That Raphael, was, second best. He was great. That's what I really liked about how we played with our party group and swapping out like every character, every level, and everything. We all ended up falling into our own like niches of like characters we preferred. Like me and yeah. my cousin, though we were playing it, we strongly preferred either Mikey or Leo. So we basically just kept swapping back and forth. And not only do they have different attributes, some of them have straight up different attacks too. Oh, we yeah. couldn't pin down what everyone's specific one was. 
But like, there's a what's called a rising attack where I think it's Y and B at the same yeah, time. Yeah, something like that. And you like yeah. attack while like jumping upward. And a lot of people just do like a rising slash to like jump up, and then you can do air combos on them. But Mikey will turn into like a corkscrew. Yeah. And his rising slash has a lot more hits, and that's his specific attribute. But Leonardo has this one thing where everybody else, when you double jump and attack, they just in the, slam in the down. That's it. But Leonardo turns into a fucking buzzsaw with yeah. his two swords, and he hits a lot more. It's all based on hits and combos, and that's pretty much everyone's specifics, except Raph's is based on power, because his was one of the only ones we could, like, figure out that was different was um, he like will suplex enemies oh, yeah. when he throws yeah. them. <laughs> the, the best thing I can figure out for Donnie is I think he had like more sliding when he yeah, did Yeah, he kind of slid around a little bit yeah, like for his slide attacks. He at least looked like he slid farther. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and he did an elbow like when he slides. Yeah. It, I think he did that move in Turtles Tournament Fighters. Yeah. Don't know if it's a reference or not, but probably. I'm assuming most yeah. things in that game are references. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, that's the next topic. Is not only to past Turtles games, but there are references galore. Like, April O'Neil straight up has, like, Chun Li's moveset from Street yeah. Fighter <laughs> because they took every great, like, I don't know what it was about them. They were just like, this is what's happening. It's chocked full of 90s video game Easter eggs, whether they be fighting games or beat em ups, but they have a lot in there. And I know April's moveset is a good bit of them. Um, I think Mikey had some interesting moves, I think, pulled from some Street Fighter characters or something like that. And we already talked yeah. about the Battletoads reference in the Chrome Dome <laughs> fight. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bosses were pretty much all great. Um, I think my least favorite was probably the more basic ones because it's just like go fight them but then like you have to fight two yeah. guys at a time with ground chuck and a uh, mole pole or whatever his name was uh, what was the mole's I name i forgot his name but diggersby yeah uh, diggersby. there was a mole and they fought together and it was really hard because yeah because one is just charging at you the whole time the other one's digging in the ground making you fall down holes right it yeah. was one of the harder ones um another one that was annoyingly fun i'll say was Rat King because <laughs> Rat King was a fun fight because he changes it up. He's not just beat him up boss. He kind of makes it more platforming and then beat him up boss. Yeah. yeah. Like a, once as we far as I could figure out, it's once you deal a certain amount of damage, the other phase starts. Maybe that's why but I was since, doing it. So since much. we had six people, we were just like wailing on him. Yeah. And he just gets down and he'll spin you around like ten times and throw you. Also. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then he he'll uses, just jump he up. Weapon on a pile of garbage and play his Pied Piper and then he summons like waves of rats at you and you gotta dodge them or else they're gonna chomp on your arm. This will be full on spoilers but uh, Krang, and, Krang and Shredder were back to back was great and then you had to fight Statue of Liberty Krang because he took it over <laughs> and it was part it was it, you had to fight the Statue of Liberty to this cool riff on the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Like, I, then, I don't know what Krang has with the Statue of Liberty. Did he really yeah. like stealing it or modifying it? Yeah. And uh, it had the voice actors from the games and, or from the cartoons yeah. and stuff. Well, all yeah. Either that or a very good impersonator because mm -hmm. that was Krang. Like, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then at the end, you fight Super Shredder, which I don't know if it was intended as a reference to Tangu Shredder from the 2003 series. But there's an ancient demon version of Shredder called Tangu Shredder that, hmm. that, uh, I don't know if that's a reference. I haven't gotten to that season yet, but he's I know he's in there and he seemed very like magically and demonically powered because he's like teleporting yeah, he around, like making fire everywhere, making shadow clones. It was crazy. But he, all these boss fights were really good. And that is what you want in a beat em up is good boss fights. Like that's kind of a necessary thing or you don't have a good beat em up. One of the strongest aspects of it, which, like Scotty said, it's just something you have to have for a beat em up, otherwise it's just like ordinary and boring. The graphics in this game were phenomenal. Like, it's some of the best sprite work I think I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, we fell in love instantly. The, and immediately, the first trailer we oh, saw, yeah. like, looked, you're just like, oh my god. 
this. And so all, like, hey, they, it's like Turtles in Time, but upgraded? Yeah. And all the characters <laughs> have a distinct personality, and you can... I'm lumping that in with graphics, because, like, that's how you're looking at them. Oh, yeah. Like, for their like, taunts, especially. Yeah, Mikey dances, Raphael laughs, Donatello plays a Game Boy. Not yeah. to mention their own, like, uh, end-level little poses, yeah. too. Donnie gets a pogo stick out. And so <laughs> yeah, yeah, Donnie gets pogo stick, Raph gets pizza on his size. Yeah, and there's, like, a lot of little, like, little touches. Like, uh, there's a... Pretty much a straight up uh, high five button. Yeah, that yeah, you can do with people and like there's it doesn't serve any point. There's double attacks that you trigger every now and then too. That they just look everything about this game. Looks yeah, you cool. can shell shock people. We never figured out shock. exactly how to trigger it. Yeah, you it can awesome. do like the fastball special basically, and like there's a lot of cool combo attacks that more or less from what we gathered. You basically have to be in the right spot at the right time, attacking simultaneously with the, the your other person. Yeah, if we had fewer oh, yeah. people, we might have maybe could have tried it a little <laughs> yeah. more and figured yeah. it out. But and oh my god! And god, the, god. even the foot soldiers had personality. Oh yeah, like, like they're sitting there doing like accounting work, that, that and then they jump one. up and like then there's because they have the factory and they're spray painting them different colors. <laughs> Like yeah, that. and like there's so many like subtle, unnecessary frames of animation too. Yeah, they did Because didn't like have the one to... Scotty was talking about, he's like being a secretary at a desk at the news station, and when you like barge in, he just like stops, puts his hands down, throws his keyboard, and then gets to fighting. And he didn't have to do all of that. He yeah. could have just stood up. They didn't and have then, to like, animate a... a foot soldier on Coney Island yeah, with that's, the little that's what like I was about to say. come come one come all. <laughs> like, Telling everybody to do some the carny yeah, carnival soldiers, games, and then oh you, you get close enough, he pulls his hat off, throws, throws it across it. the screen, and he's just like, "Let's go!" And not only <laughs> does he th do all that, but it is animated just as fluidly and smoothly as every frame of the turtles. Like this is a background image. Like, oh yeah, they didn't have to go that hard on it, but they did. No, because you look at a lot of old Super Nintendo games. Normally, it's like two frames of animation. Like if they're in the background, like right. in a Turtle Tournament Fighter, yeah, yeah. Or if you Street would... Fighter or something like that, where the people in the background, you know, they're like standing up and then doing this. If they had so never, when they play it back to back, they're cheering or whatever. But if they didn't do that, <laughs> we would not have noticed. No, like yeah. we wouldn't have been like they should have given the foot soldiers more more personality. Like no, they're robots. Yeah, because it's then... based on the cartoon, so they are robots. <laughs> Along those same lines, there's something that we didn't notice until about halfway through. Certain things are contextual too, because if you like knock a foot soldier down, he has one death animation. If you hit him into an object, he has a different one. If he if he dies against a wall, he has a different animation. And there's it, you didn't have to do all of that, and we love you for it. Yeah, it's some, <laughs> and it's like the best pixel art I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, like, like one standout oh example is uh, Leatherhead when you're fighting him. Like he could have <laughs> just he could he, I feel he does, like I'm in a gumbo. Yeah, <laughs> when like you he, kill him, he does like whack a mole basically because he's popping up and up out of the uh, manholes on the stage. Just he like could have just he could have just jumped up and down in those, but they gave him a specific like crawling down animation. Yeah, and, and it, it was, flies it was off great. When you kill him. It's great. Yeah, just so, so many little touches and and sports. little touches of nostalgia for anybody that watched the old cartoon too, because like Vernon's in this, Irma's in this. Aaron was like, calling all uh, this bullshit <laughs> that we were just like. What the hell is this? And yeah. he's like, "Oh, that's the punk frogs." Yeah, yeah obvious. The punk frogs. I, I recognize like, basically everything except yeah, those, those except pizza xenomorphs. Like, yeah, <laughs> pizza morphs. He even called some whack ass shit of some weird Dimension X people that oh, he was just yeah. like, "Yeah, they're basically just like fifties teenagers." Yeah, and the, they uh, were just what? Like what the hell? Like. <laughs> I forgot their name now. I, I knew it when I saw them, but they're ermites or whatever. But they're just oh yeah, hey, come on, the, boys. Neutrinos, neutrinos, neutrinos. That's not close yeah. at all. And then like when we got to Dimension X, spoilers by the way. But uh, he popped down, and I was like, ooh, General Trag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they got immediately they got Triceratons in this bitch. It's everything. And they yeah. showed like oh. Sorry, the Triceratons, when they die, instead of exploding, they just get beamed up back to, like, a spaceship. Yeah, oh, yeah, and, like, the, the rock monsters, they, like, they, they, like, they, melt like crumble away, and melt. And it's, they're just kind of like, oh, no! Like, you see their hand in the last second. <laughs> like, and of course, it's not the best graphics I've ever seen or anything, but it's, like, the amount of detail packed into every level is some of the most ridiculous I've ever seen. 
and everything's so colorful and cool. And this is just a masterpiece. Oh yeah, like and, in it, like I love this game. This and is, on top of that, mm. like you have all of that happening, and it runs pretty smoothly. We had a few like frame rate hiccups every now and yeah, then. Yeah, every, every now and again, every now and again, I got stuck in the players. air. Like I got yeah. stuck in the yeah. air a few times while I was kicking. We That's... had six player co op with all of this fancy animation happening, and it ran almost perfect. And it, yeah, and color was like a main thing about it. Like everyone doing, they did their super was surrounded by like this aura of whatever color they mm -hmm. were associated with. And it fits the characters so well. Oh yeah, and that's that's the other thing is like you in the unlock... middle of all the chaos, you can still see what's happening. Yeah, you can keep track of your character, even though the only thing to technically distinctify them is like it's green turtles. There's four green turtles, but they <laughs> each have like a colored bandana. But somehow it's obvious enough to tell who's who without like you know a Leo place marker head it like above his head like in smash brothers or something yeah. like and that it's, especially when you get the the big thing at the end with the three super meter bars yeah that's another mm -hmm. thing that was cool that's more gameplay is that you unlock stuff as you go but you unlock like super mode basically and like a an aura of their color like donatello's aura was yeah, purple following yeah, him around was... like little aura after images it was so that cool. looked so cool so we already covered gameplay and graphics but one thing a beat em up truly needs to succeed, in addition to those two, is music. And Shredder's Revenge does not disappoint in oh, this from regard. The, from the first trailer, this music was great. Shredder's Revenge oh has gosh. some of the best music I've heard in years. Especially video game wise. Because this, this soundtrack, when I was going through it, you know, you have your soundtracks that you're just like, okay, this is great for atmospheric music. But I don't really want to like jam out to this. Shredder's Revenge has the jiggity jammiest soundtrack <laughs> I've heard in quite a long time. Because when I was going through it, it was on shuffle. But it was almost, I thought it was going to be the perfect soundtrack at first. Like I've only had one soundtrack to me that was perfect that I didn't want to delete any tracks from. And that was Tron Legacy. And <laughs> Shredder's Revenge was almost that. It ended up being pretty stacked towards the beginning with some of the cool ones and then the other ones weren't like as good like they're great but it's just not something I really want to listen to but it ends up being about 90% of the tracks on the actual soundtrack are worthwhile to jam out to just to listen to it's fantastic my only complaint is that every song is only about like three minutes long like max like that's it this but, is some of the catchiest music I think I've heard since, like, the first Mega Man X. Yes, oh, it's, yeah, it's so super catchy. catchy. Every level has a different theme, too. Like, you have one, like, rooftop running reptiles. That one's, like, super funky. But then you have, like, Big Apple 3 p.m., a funny Turtles in Time reference, but also a very jazzy soundtrack. And then you have just straight up... Songs with lyrics yeah. in them. Yeah, they got yeah. The, the sky level one was really good. It sounded like a Sonic Adventure. Yeah, song. that's what it reminded me of. But, but um, then they got the over Broadway was another good one. Yeah. It was very techno-y and like cool. And they got the Wu Tang Clan to do the Shredder <laughs> Battle soundtrack, a, a rap like it yeah. was so good and so fitting and, and to have all yeah. these different genres of music with the turtles. Because that's like, what I was gonna say. Like none of it sounded out of place. Yeah. Because all the turtles, like, themselves signify, like, different genres of musical taste and everything. And it kind of was, like, playing to that. Like, you know, if, I mean, there was oh, yeah. certain the levels. rock but... was definitely Leo's. Right. And then, yeah, like. The, all the synth was Don. Right. Mm -hmm. And, like, all the, mm -hmm. like, jazz and stuff was probably Mikey because he moves fast. The all rap, the funk the... was Raph. And... Yeah, the rap probably either Mike or Raph. I don't know where to place yeah, the rap. I don't rap. know which one was Splinter. Which, but... Yeah, Splinter loves rap. That's you know. <laughs> but the best, Ninja like, rap. they didn't get Vanilla Ice. Yeah, That's no, no Vanilla Ice, sadly. But if I can give you anything, it's gonna be listen to these five tracks because Big Apple 3 p.m. is a big one. Uh, Mutants over Broadway, King of the Spill, I will say, is probably one of the best tracks of the game because it is heavily featured in all the trailers. Um, Panic in the Sky That's is the, the Sonic rock. Adventure yeah. style song. And then... We Ain't Came to Lose. That's we the... Ain't Came to Lose was the Wu-Tang song. And 
A few screws loose is another one. It just like gets you amped up and it's just like we're about to go f up Krang right now. Like we're storming the Technodrome. <laughs> Let's get it. I'm oh, on the man. interstate. Them putting... and I'm speeding unintentionally because of this music. <laughs> they were they were putting Krang together the whole game too. Like you found his head and then they found his chest, they found his yeah, legs, and they were always doing funny stuff. His like sad dude. potato head. Yeah. yeah, it was so funny. It was so great. This this is some of the most personality I've seen and heard in a game in years. It's so, so awesome. And ultimately, that's the best takeaway we can give you. Is it's got outstanding gameplay, amazing, just gorgeous graphics, and a big old bumping soundtrack to listen to while you beat up on all the Foot Clan. Shredder's Revenge is probably one of our favorite games of the year so oh, far. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's yeah. one of the best ones I've It's played. going to be on our top 10 games of 2022. Oh, if, like, if it's not, I will it. be very surprised. But that's what we're going to leave you with. If you haven't, go play Shredder's Revenge. It is highly yeah. worth it. It's what? How much is it? It's like 25 bucks. It's it's only like two and a half hours long, but that's that's about what you want with a beat-em-up, honestly. That is... Like, maybe... If you go for everything and all the challenges, it's going to be significantly longer. Yeah. yeah. It's about a fourth of what you'll pay and double the time of taking all your friends bowling. So it's definitely <laughs> worth it to like get a group together, pay 25 bucks. You have a really, really fun and memorable night that you'll be talking about for at least a month. Like Get Shredder's Revenge. Play it. It's got story mode. It's got arcade mode. You unlock Casey Jones. You can replay it forever. It's going to be amazing. Do yourself a favor and get it. Let us know what you think of after you play it. And be sure to stay tuned to Bro Trio for more turtle news because this has lighted a, reignited a fire in us and in apparently the gaming community because we have the Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection Ooh. coming out soon. And we just can't get enough turtles. So the Bro Trio has put the task upon themselves. Once the Cowabunga Collection comes out, we're ranking all the games in the Cowabunga Collection and Shredder's Revenge. So stay tuned to Bro Trio for that. Yeah, really, there's I can't think of anything else to say. Cowabunga says it all. Cowabunga! So have you ever caught yourself wondering, how does the Bro Trio make all those sweet thumbnails for the powwows? Well, I draw them. And if you would like to see me draw them, be sure to go support us on Patreon. This is our newest Patreon reward to give our Patreons just a little more something to get to know the Bro Trio with.